think the highest. Blood. 
will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. The name him, they name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. He will rule as David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
that he granted us in the Beloved. Therefore, I, too, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all the holy ones, do not cease giving thanks for you, remembering in my prayers. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of Him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to His call. What are the riches of glory in His inheritance among the Holy Ones? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The statue 
or printed images of Santo Niño can be found in almost all Catholic homes across the entire country. In every home, in every store or other business establishments, there is a corner dedicated to Santo Niño with the candles. Sometimes in the houses of the Chinese people, we find also next to Santo Niño Buddha or vice versa, Santo Niño next to Buddha. And this attachment to Santo Niño is probably one of the many reasons why Rome granted to the Philippines a special permission to celebrate the feast of the Santo Niño every third Sunday of January. The devotion to the Santo Niño is inextricably linked with the history of the Filipino people of the Philippines. According to historical accounts, the Holy Child Jesus was brought to the Philippines by the great Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, who was in the service of the King of Spain. On his way to the spy, Spice Islands, Magellan arrived in Cebu in April 1521. And there he was greeted by the local chieftain Raja Humabon and his wife Hara Amihan, who prepared for him and for his companions a very warm welcome. In turn, he persuaded them not only to pledge their allegiance to Spain, but also they were baptized into the Catholic faith, taking Christian names Carlos and Juana. And then Magellan gave the statue of Santo Niño to Queen Juana as her baptismal gift. In short, dear brothers and sisters, this devotion is particularly dear to the Filipinos for this is the first religious image that set foot on the Philippine soil. And it is the concrete historical icon that marked the beginning of Christianity in the Philippines. On the other hand, this, this devotion has profound theological significance, especially in relation to the mystery of the Incarnation. The second person of God took on our human nature. He is true God and at the same time true man. As true man, he became like us in all things except sin. The image of the Santo Niño is a clear expression of this belief in the God made man. Jesus Christ passed through each and every stage of human life becoming like a child, simple and humble, to show us the way back to the Heavenly Father. And in today's Gospel, as we heard, Jesus asked by his disciples, who is the greatest in the Kingdom of Heaven, answers that if anyone wants to enter the Kingdom of Heaven, he needs to become like a child. A child has three qualities which make, makes him the model for those who are citizens of the kingdom. First and foremost is the child's humility. The child 
is content to be in the shadow of his parents. It is only when he grows up that he is initiated into the individualistic competitive world with its struggle and scramble to be ahead of others, to be better than the others. The value that we learn from the world as we grow up is to strive for possession, power, honor, fame and comfort and to show us where the true value lies Jesus chose to be born of poor parents unnoticed by the world without fanfare and fireworks only the illiterate poor shepherds and the pagan magi paid him homage at his birth the second quality is the child's dependence. To a child, a state of dependence is perfectly natural. He is perfectly content to be dependent on those who love him and who care for him. Jesus lived for 30 years obedient to Joseph and Mary. In the Gospel, we find no, not too many details about his life in Nazareth during the first 30 years when he was helping his foster father Joseph. Small children know that they are utterly dependent on the kindness of others to nurture and sustain them. In telling us to become like little children, Jesus calls us to open and trusting dependence on God, secure in the knowledge that God will take care of all our needs. And the third quality is the child's trust. He instinctive, instinctively trusts his parents that his needs will be met. When we were children, we could not buy our own food. We could not buy our own clothes or maintain, maintain our home. Yet we never doubted that we would be clothed and fed and that there would be shelter, warmth and comfort waiting for us when we needed them. To the world, greatness and success mean wealth, fame and power. But according to Christ, the reverse is true. To be poor in spirit, to be simple, to be humble is the secret of Christian success. Being child doesn't mean belonging to a certain age bracket or being irresponsible. It means to be humble. The child is someone who recognizes that he or she is in need of others. The humble one knows one's incompleteness and one's neediness. The humble one has shut off all pretensions of self-reliance and self-sufficiency. Small children know that they are utterly dependent on the kindness of others to nurture and sustain them. And in telling us to become like little children, Jesus calls us to open and trust in dependence on God, secure in the knowledge that God will meet all our needs. 
To be a child often means to be physically small and weak in intelligence. Therefore, to be childlike must obviously mean to be intentionally small and for the forever gathering and learning. It means to consider oneself small and insignificant and to be an eternal student, always being able to learn. The child sees the world as it really is, without the complications the adults put in the way. Jesus sets the bar for entrance into the kingdom of heaven quite high in today's gospel. He says that we must change and become like little children. Let us think about this. Where do I need to change most? We live in the world of narcissists where so many people are engrossed by themselves and by their importance. And so that being like a child is really counter-cultural. Let us ask God for light and wisdom to see where and how we can become like a little child. Let us learn from the children. Let us allow them to remind us sometimes with regards to some important things as Christians which we forgot. When we make the life complicated, let the children remind us to be simple once again. Let life be simple again. Let us make life like a kiss. Keep it simple and stupid. In other words, it means let us laugh sometimes at our lives. Let us make our lives not so serious. As Pope Saint John Paul II in his very first time when he was in the Philippines in 1981, reminded the faithful in his homily in Cebu that the child Jesus did not remain a child. He grew up, he said, in the same way we must grow up in faith. And so, therefore, we have to grow up in our prayer and in our faith in order for us to be able to face the demands and trials of life. So today, on the feast of Santo Nino, we are called by God to be childlike, but not to be childish, not to be irresponsible. He wants us to rely on God and not on ourselves, not rely on money and prestige. And Jesus says that unless we change and become like little children, we won't enter the kingdom of God. Changing and becoming are symbols for conversion. The image of the Santo Nino encourages us to grow up spirituality and trust in God like a little child and mature spirituality in our faith that enables us to face whatever difficulties may lie ahead of us. Amen. Amen. Now let us stand, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father and for all ages, life from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father, through me all things for me, for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and with the Holy 
Holy Spirit was in the reign of the Virgin Mary and in the Amen. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the river of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one who only has the apostolic church. I confess from the citizen for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we honor the Santa Nina, let us turn our attention to our children and youth and pray for all their needs, saying, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the whole church, under the leadership of the Holy Father, our bishop and priest, may always show a special practical love for our children and youth. Let us pray. Lord, Jesus, that all teachers and the media may help our children and youth imbibe authentic values and motivate them to live by such values. Let us pray. Lord, Jesus, that the children and youth of our nation may give the dedication, purity, and honesty treasuring and practicing their Catholic faith. Let us pray. Lord, please hear us. That all parents may care for their children and bring them up as, up, as upright citizens and zealous members of the Church. Let us pray. Lord, please hear us. That all the devotees of the Santo Nino may persevere in their efforts to grow in love of God and neighbor. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. We include all the intentions of our benefactors and of those who ask for our prayers. And we pray, Lord, grant us a dedicated concern for the children and the youth of today. May we work for their total welfare, for love of you, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord's sacrifice and repentance for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all soul and church. God, our Creator, we offer the gifts of bread and wine to recall the childhood of your only Son. Let us, let our offering become the sacrifice of Him who brought forgiveness and peace to the world. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for on the feast of this O-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may marry to be coerced to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Oh 
Thanks be to God.